Good evening and welcome to the Midland Public Schools Board of Education regularly scheduled meeting September 18th, 2017. At this time, if everyone would please turn off their cell phones, um, we get interference with our TV feed. I would appreciate it. And then stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Of course. President Brandsett. Here. Vice President Singer. Here. Treasurer Frizee. Member Baker. Here. Member Blasey. Here. Member Friedel. Here. Six out of seven. All right. Thank you. Moving into item two, which is our consent agenda. 2.1, approval of the regular meeting minutes from August 21st, 2017. 2.2, the following persons recommended for employment for the 2017-18 school year. 2.3 are the following staff members who have announced their resignations with the effective dates noted. 2.4 is administration recommending the renewal of our adult ed cooperative agreement between Bullet Creek, Coleman, Meridian, and Midland Public for the 2017-18 school year. 2.5 is the additional enhanced access computers for elementary school students due to enrollment increase. 2.6 is the approval of payment of the school system's bills for the month of July and August. And 2.7 are legal invoices for payment. So at this time, I would entertain a motion. So moved. Support. Okay. Mary. <coughs> No, I got Mary. And Scott. And Scott. All right. A coin toss. And, well, you both spoke at the same time. So. All right. At this time, is there any discussion? I think it's great that we had to buy more computers because of enrollment increases. That's only great news. And it was also uh, fun to see a couple names on uh, the new employees that my kids graduated with. So wow. that's always good news. All right, is there any other discussion? All right, nope. seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, the consent agenda passes. Moving into item three, Board of Education Matters. 3.1 would be our audit report. So Bob, do you wanna? Yep, I'm gonna turn over right away to Mr. Dave Youngstrom from Yo and Yo, who did our audit, and so he's gonna present an overview of our a 2016-17 audit report, of which you've had electronic copies in your packet and also a hard copy there. So, Dave? Well, thank you very much. It's great to be here. Um, I want to thank you on behalf of Yo and Yo. We really appreciate the opportunity to serve uh, the public schools. Uh, and I have to present your June 30th, 2017 results. Uh, it's quite an accomplishment to be here and so early in September uh, with a district this size. And, uh, Is that better? A district this size and have uh, to close out your books and be done basically by the end of August and be able to present here and uh, is, is an incredible uh, accomplishment. Um, Mr. Cooper and Mr. Fullerby, Ms. Fullerby, all their hard work and their staff's hard work to get, it, get us to this point and we really do appreciate that that being able to be here because it's still the, the second school district I presented. So um, we do a lot of schools all over the state. So what I have for you is a little overview tonight. Uh, we'll kind of go through it. If you have questions, please feel free to ask me as we go. There we go. All right, we are issuing an unmodified opinion, which is the highest level of assurance we can give on a financial statement. It's also a clean audit. So it's what you're looking for. Um, and I probably no surprise to you we're here because we do have, uh, we made no journal entries this year in processing the audit, no material transactions that we had to make. Um, so all the information you're seeing on a regular basis is what we're auditing at the end of the year. So it should give you a lot of comfort when it comes to that. Taking a look at our general fund. Our balance sheet, which is a snapshot in time. Um, as of June 30th, this is 2017 and 16, you can see them kind of comparatively. Uh, the first line you see cash is up about $5 million, which is really a good sign for us and it's a good sign of things to come. Um, 
the, the next largest item there, about $9.9 .9 million is owed to us from the state of Michigan and the federal government for, for costs we've already incurred throughout the year. And then you see pledges receivable, the next line, about a million eight. We collected about 600,000 of that this year. Uh, you don't see pledges receivable on school district reports very often. Um, and that's just incredible community support for what you guys have done and built and are continuing to build over the, well, I guess you built it over the summer, but our June 30th, 2017, we still have a few things working, but uh, just to have that kind of community support behind what you guys do is just tremendous. And I don't see that in very many places. So kudos to the community for stepping up to really help us provide great educational opportunities for kids. Our liabilities are made up mostly of salaries and fringe benefits, which are mostly our, our 10 month employees accrued over the summer. They get paid out over the summer as well. That's up eight, about, up about 600,000 to a little over $8 million. And then we have some dollars, and you see pledges down there again. That's money we're gonna be getting in the future and recognizing that as revenue over the next couple of years. And some property taxes are the same. They'll be able to collect those in the next year, but that 1.8 million of pledges is still coming in. It'll come into our budget next year leaving us with about $13.8 million in fund balance. We'll talk more about fund balance a little bit later. Comparing our statement of revenues, expenses, and changes in fund balance from one year to the next, uh, revenues are up about 1%, uh, a little over $80.3 million. Um, expenditures are down 2.8% uh, to $76.2 million. So we've done a really good job of managing our uh, expenditures, keeping an eye on those uh, costs, and making sure we are putting ourselves in a very good position moving forward. Uh, get a solid, solid performance for $4 million, a little over 5% to the fund, to added to fund balance this year in the general fund. So a real nice job. Our budget, which is what we approved the school board, um, you can see revenues are, are spot on 0.1% difference on $8 million, $80 million. And then expenditures are within 3%, which is pretty darn good when you're, when you're guessing at the end of June what's gonna come into the rest of the summer. Um, even including some capital projects we had going that we did pay out of the general fund. Um, that's pretty good to be with that number. And again, it's the right way for us, not over. And then just comparing one year to the next, which we talked about a little bit, 0.7% increase in revenues and a 2.8% decrease in expenditures. Uh, creates you about $2.8 million uh, better than you were a year ago on the income side. So again, nice work, which all my districts had. <laughs> And then looking at where we're getting our revenue sources from in the general fund. Uh, uh, the largest piece there you see is the state of Michigan. We're getting 66% of our dollars from the state of Michigan, which is up 1%. Um, local, uh, local, our local taxes are down about 2% of the total, uh, down tw to 26%. And we picked up another percent in uh, federal awards actually this year. So we got a little bit more money from the federal government, uh, to push just to 2%. So uh, every little bit helps and we'll take everything we can get. And you can see our revenues really consistent, very, very stable. Uh, what we do get, uh, the federal piece being the smallest piece there, um, inter-district, and you can see the green and the blue all very consistent over the last uh, five years there. And you can see compared to when proposed late came into effect, uh, how much it's grown, but the revenue continues to be flat. I mean, really, if you look at it. Our expenditure side, where does our money go? Where do we spend our money on? Uh, no surprise to anybody in the room, probably we spend 92% uh, on people, 87% of salary and 5% on purchase services. So we're 92% of our people um, are taking almost all, we're spending all of our money on people. Um, and that's the same percentage as it was the prior year. Um, materials and other were all 4% as well and capital outlay stayed about the same. So very consistent on the expenditure side, though a little bit uh, decrease in the total. And looking at the expenditure side, Pretty, pretty similar picture here, but you can see it kind of, the expenditures in 14 kind of tick up a little bit, and then they tick down just very slightly and, and trend down in 15, 16, and now into 17. So slight dec decrease in our expenditures over the last year, three years. Again, uh, good, good financial planning as well as some retirements have helped fund a lot of that. We had some retirements go out a few years ago, and we're seeing the full benefit of that as we hit these numbers. I like, uh, I'm a big per pupil person. I like to take a look at it on a per pupil basis to kind of paint the picture of how many kids we're dealing with, what are we spending per kid, what are we getting in per kid, our student, if you will. And you can see the three, three of the last five years, we did, ex we did spend more than we took in. Uh, 2013, 14, and 15, we did spend down our fund balance quite a bit. Um, 16, we put a little bit back in. 17, we put a little bit more. And I know that's part of our plan that we've been following, but um, I think you'll see when we look at the fund balance, you can see kind of the, the slope we have there. But uh, a good gap there. We are spending, we're planning to spend some fund balance though next year. 
And what's left are our savings account, our rainy day fund, our fund balance. Um, total fund balance is about 18%, but unassigned uh, spendable fund balance is at about 16%. That's up about 4% this year. And what's that really equate to you? It's a big number, it's $12.4 million, but you gotta remember you're at $80 million budget. And that's really, you can operate for 66 days on that fund balance is all. Uh, so that's a little over two months in your savings account. And in a school year equivalent, it's only 33 days. So um, we're sitting at about 16%. Like I said, uh, Michigan School Business Finishers recommends between 15 and 20. So you kind of got, got up to that percentage where um, they think you should be at. So I think uh, we've done a really nice job financially. And there's a slide I talked about. You can see our fund balance as we started that five-year slope we talked about, spending it down the last three years here, and then we kind of put it back in. And you can see we're pretty close to where we were in 2012, um, spending-wise. So, so we restored that fund balance to where it was back in 2012. Any questions on the financial piece? And I'll talk a little bit about our bond here. And obviously we audit, we audit the bond as we go. Each year we audit the bond a few transactions until it's complete. And though most of the projects aren't done by now, June 30th is our cutoff for the audit. So what you'll have at the end of the pro is the actual bond audit that comes out a separate report that will talk about all we've done. In the report itself, we have compliance with there and we've noted no issues with compliance with that. We've even done some extra testing in that area the, the last couple of years just to make sure things are uh, where, where they should be. And that's kind of one of the risk areas we looked at. So we've had no issues with that. But again, when that projects are all done, wrapped up, uh, within 120 days after that, we'll issue a bond audit report with that and you'll have uh, that for uh, to file with your documents. So audit numbers, we talked about the numbers. I'll well, talk about internal controls and we talked about the bond audit right there. Um, some of the areas we also looked at this year, we looked at human resource data testing. Uh, some of the data testing we had test looked at this year was really related to our pension obligations, making sure the calculations are all correct for our actuarial studies. Uh, just something different we looked at a little harder. Uh, we did some bid testing. Uh, we did some sinking fund testing as well as the bond testing. We looked at where we could collect cash outside the main office, like these for decentralized cash, we're collecting it in the buildings, and looked at those areas. Um, we looked at school pay this year, which was a new area for us to look at a little closer. Looked at the, uh, adjusting journal entries, at-risk monies, and credit cards. Uh, just to name some of the things we looked at in, in addition to the audit. And so we have no material weaknesses and controls. We have no significant deficiencies. Uh, we did have one management comment, which really uh, is kind of an opportunity to strengthen the controls we have in place. Uh, as part of our federal testing and, and the food service, we'll talk about that in a minute. We found, we tested 40 applications and we had one that was in cal calculated incorrectly. Certainly a material of the financial statements always a whole, but just something, hey, we need to take a look at, just take a look at the procedures we have in place and see what we can do to make it a little bit better. So that was the only thing we really came up with on the audit this year as we looked through all the internal controls. And the last piece we look at is compliance. And again, I mentioned that earlier. Uh, the nutrition cluster is what we looked at this year, which is a food service, uh, uh, the student lunch. Um, and we tested 71 different areas in that program. Uh, looking at different things, different traits, and different ways of compliance, and we had no findings in that program. We had that one minor little thing, one application. Uh, you know, I'd be worried if it was two or three or four or five, but it's really one out of 40, not really 5%, so we're, we're less than 5%. We're doing really good in that area as well. And the last part is I, I always talk about the future challenges because the future challenges are we face them every day. Uh, health insurance costs um, are, are challenging, not just in school districts, but in every, everywhere, in the, everywhere in the country, uh, and probably the world, too, in that, in that case, too. But the costs <coughs> continue to rise. Uh, we really have no uh, limited control over what we can do with those in many cases. I talk about state funding because it's, it has an impact on a lot of things, and not only per pupil, but it also, they're putting a, an extra billion dollars into the retirement plan to hold our rates low. And they, I think that that's been great. They put three billion dollars into that over the last three years, uh, and things have been pretty good in the Michigan economy. What happens when it's not? Is it going to still be there? So I think it's something we we'll have to worry about or be concerned about long term when we look at what, what we use our fund balance for. And our pension obligation uh, is the biggest number on our, our statement of that, uh, that position, and it grew this year, even though we put a, we paid all our contributions and put an extra billion dollars into the whole plan. Um, it grew, the obligation increased. Um, we have some contractual obligations we're settling up this year. And then next year, we're going to pick up GASB 75, which is post-employment health care benefits. We picked up the pension side th two years ago, 
we'll pick up the health insurance side again this year, uh, next year, excuse me, 17, 18 year. And again, you'll continue to pay the rate you pay. It's not going to have an impact on you today, but it's an additional obligation that's on your books, um, long-term obligation. So you'll, you, you pay the retirement rates you pay today. And the last one is energy costs. Uh, mild winters have been nice, uh, but you know, again, those, uh, those costs sometimes can get out of control on us. And when you have a lot of buildings going, you have a lot of new things that have happened, so that'll help with a lot of that. But uh, we do have some things there that that's just additional cost to districts that we, again, have a little, very little control over. And with that, I thank you for your attention. Are there any questions I can answer for you? I went through um, all the paperwork Brave. thoroughly after Brave. the uh, FFO meeting, and uh, I, I appreciate all the detail in going through so many records for us. And, um, I feel comfortable uh, with the clean audit, the un unmodified opinions. Um, I feel like we're in a very good position uh, with our fund balance. and. Um, you, you mentioned a few critical areas that we want to keep our eye on for the future. And I think we, we do need to make sure we're, we're watching uh, what happens at the state, especially if our economy has a downturn, to make sure that school funds not rated or do what we can. The best to, you can. To at least uh, talk to our legislators. So thank you for your work. Um, I guess I'm also Im impressed that we, we were able to get this done so quickly. Um, Sitting here in September, uh, just a reflection, Bob, of, of you and Lori, and uh, of the hard work that went into this. So thank you for that. Their comments. Ditto. <laughs> Ditto. Since our bond is going to be such a long duration, is it commonplace? Would you ever, because we have it in kind of two releases, roughly seventy million and then fifty million, would you do an audit or a prelim audit for our own internal control, even though that's not what's going to be filed? If you're selling them in two series, is correct? Is that correct? Yeah, I think, right? Okay. The first series, then we're so going to do the second. At the completion of that, you'll do an audit? Of each series. Of each series. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK. All right. Yeah, but we've started yep. the one now. We're probably. It's actually three. It'll be three. You're yeah. right, Brad. The third one's very small. OK. Yeah, so three series. OK. Yeah. And we treat them all individually for that purpose. OK. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. I mean, you know, I did it with Pam said, and, you know, we're trending positively on the fund balance, and appreciate you bringing that up. And your last sheet, of course, shows us all the challenges that we potentially will have going yep. forward, which is why it's important to have a strong fund balance. And strong might be a misnomer when you look at only 33 days of operating expenses during a school year. So. And, and like I said, there's a lot of districts would like to have what you have. Right, mm -hmm. right. But we still have a lot of uncertainty. Right. Uh -huh. Oh, another thing, I'm just very appreciative of all our foundation uh, investments in our district. Um, with you telling us, too, that most districts don't have that, um, we're very fortunate here to have a community that is so supportive of education. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Any other comments? Angela, will need approval. You need right, to right, exactly. Yeah. So at this time, I'll entertain a motion. For approval of the 2016-17 audit. So moved. Support. Support from Lynn. All right. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Thank you very much, Dave. Moving into 3.2, which is our September Shining Stars. We have a little bit of different surprise today. So generally our shining stars know who they are beforehand and we invite them to the board meeting. But in today's case, um, just can you move the screen up to get to see them. Um, this month our shining stars um, are here with us. They're here going to be presenting tonight and they don't know they're shining stars. So we, <laughs> we are announcing that right now for them. So Connie Stagger and Anthony Gates, if you'd come up and stand with me, I'll read a little bit about you. To come up and stand by me, guys. Let me read a little bit about Connie first. Connie began her employment with Midland Public Schools in November of 2016 as a learning coach at Midland High School. Before coming to MPS, she spent 15 years teaching social studies to high school and middle school students at Bay City Public Schools. Connie has her Bachelor of Arts degree from Michigan State University and her Master of Arts in teaching from SVSU. 
Anthony Gates. Anthony began his employment with MPS in 2014 as a special education teacher at Midland High. Before coming to MPS, he was a special education teacher at Chesening Union Schools. Anthony has his Bachelor's of Arts degree in special education from Saginaw Valley State University. These dedicated educators were nominated for the Shining Star by an MPS colleague. Among her comments, the staff member wrote, Connie and Anthony are shining stars for their leadership of the 2017 Chemic Challenge, which they're presenting to you tonight. From the inception of the idea through completion of the program in early August, Connie and Anthony collaborated with Midland High School and the district administrators and teachers at both Northeast and Midland High to develop and implement a summer learning experience that aimed to enhance incoming ninth grade students' success in math. While the program had a strong focus on helping students to be algebra ready, it was designed to also provide broader STEM focused learning activities that highlighted the real world application of math concepts. Another outcome of the program was to help erase students transition to high school by becoming more familiar with the school staff and overall chemic expectations. Connie and Anthony spent countless hours planning every detail of the four week summer experience to ensure the best possible outcomes. They collaborate with teachers to develop and engage target lessons. They promote the program and recruit the students. They emphasize strong parent communication and involvement throughout the program. They ensured every detail was on point, from transportation and meals to team building and leadership activities. Connie and Anthony were shining stars as they went well above and beyond the expectations with this program and truly showed their chemical pride. Congratulations, guys. And you can shake everyone down. <laughs> and then you get to talk to them, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank <laughs> well, good evening. Um, thanks for having us. It's my pleasure to be here tonight representing students and staff of Midland High School. And I will be sharing the stage tonight or the podium tonight with the two that you that you just met as shining stars for the month. And I would just say first, um, I guess my job is to give a bit of the rationale or the background for the program. And so I would say first that this is just really one of several initiatives that we've undertaken in the last few years at Midland High School to increase mathematics scores and to try to support kids who have struggled in that area. Math is often the, the course or the subject in high school where they really hit a roadblock. Um, so when it, when it comes to making overall school improvement and trying to reduce achievement gaps, it's one of the areas that we think we need to target resources and so the chemic challenge is, is one program and there are several others that I'll mention briefly but um, to take over where Mike kind of left off with his recognition of these two um, the idea again was really to support kids in that critical transition research shows that any students who struggle especially in the ninth grade year uh, with any course failures and again those are often mathematics are less likely to graduate on time and so the inverse is also true if they do well in that ninth grade year, they're more likely to graduate on time. Um, this program is, as I said, one of many supports for at-risk students. We've done intentional scheduling for, for students in our 9-2 uh, algebra and our 10-2 geometry this year. Uh, we've supported um, SAT workshops and other test preparation and opportunity where kids um, didn't have as much access to those before, and, and frankly, state assessments like the PSAT and SAT, there, there's certainly a benefit to, um, or maybe a practice effect uh, occurs a little bit, but there's some benefit to more experience that the kids have with those tests. And of course, it relates to our broader school improvement goals in the area of reducing math achievement gaps. Um, we wanted to meet students where they were. We did have a, a target group. Certainly, we, we were flexible and we accepted truly any kids that wanted to join the program, but we, when we sent out the initial invitations, we were looking at the, the, the group of kids who either did poorly on the PSAT 8, and we had that data from the spring, or who had consistently struggled 
in their math courses through middle school. And so we, we did cast a fairly big net. I think these two could speak to that exactly, but I know that we sent over 120 invitations and, and I think our initial response was in the 50 or 60 range, so about 50%. But again, keep in mind this is a summer program um, that they're doing voluntarily. So <laughs> I take that as a success. If you have 50 or 60 kids who say, well, yeah, we might come to school in the summer. So it was good. Um, and, and again, the overall strategies of the program were really to increase engagement, increase rigor, gain back some time. That's really the one factor that we don't have much control over during the school year. If, uh, if we have a student who's two or maybe three years behind in math, it's almost impossible to make those types of gains in one school year. So we tried to steal back a little time by having them meet over the summer. And again, we, we're fortunate at Midland High School to have a very collaborative culture with the staff. And so it was easy when we notified them, teachers, that there was going to be a program. We had a huge number of volunteers. In fact, we couldn't even use all of the teachers who volunteered for the program. So I think with that, I'm going to turn it over to Connie and Anthony. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I'd just like to say good evening, and I'm humbled and honored. Thank you to all of you. That was such a surprise and a blessing. We are just honored to be here and have an opportunity to present something that we feel so passionately about, and that's our at-risk population. And I'm so excited to share with you our chemic challenge. Okay, so we put together, as Jeff already said, an Algebra Ready, as Algebra is the new gateway to college, Algebra STEM-focused program designed for a growth mindset. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Carol Dweck's research on a growth versus a fixed mindset, but we believe that all students can can do math. We all think math. We believe math is important and that we need to give some passion and life back to math education. So our focus was critical thinking, problem solving, perseverance, and, uh, and a growth mindset. So in uh, looking at that growth mindset and in looking at the students that we wanted to, to invite to the Chemic Challenge, as Mr. Jeff Jaster stated, we were looking at PSAT scores. And so we went through and we kind of dove into those scores and looked at those students that were going to be our current freshmen right now, our incoming freshman class. And ultimately what we decided to do is we invited 33% roughly of our incoming freshman class based on those PSAT scores. We looked at those students that you know struggled the most on the content of that test and certainly looked at that uh, as a uh, you know a basically an identifier and saying you know what there's an area here where we can get in there and we can help these students as, as a, Mr. Jasser said we can kind of take back some of that time and let's look at what we can do you know over the course of the summer um, a you know one month but pitched as a 16 day program is just 16 days um, <laughs> come on you know come on in and uh, we're gonna work with you to help build some of those math skills and truly um, work on getting you ready for the high school math curriculum and just high school in general. So our focus was on the eight mathematical practices. You can find these in elementary, middle school, northeast as well. And uh, some of my favorite were to reason abstractly, use strategies, attend to precision. It was the perseverance piece we were looking for. If you're up for the challenge, then you'll need to not quit. Right? The, opportunities to, to find ways to express reasoning and models. So you can see that all of our courses embodied all the mathematical practices. And this was our learning target of the purpose statement. This was our learning targets for the day. So in kind of reference to that last slide then, this is a basically a mock-up or a model of what one of the weeks of the Chemex Challenge would have looked like. And I think uh, some things to note, there's two things really, is the focus on math. And you can see that in every day consisting of an Algebra 9.2 course that was helping to prep students for that incoming 9.2 experience. But also the math lab that was serving as kind of a remedial support class that was going to help those students maybe build some of those skills um, to prep them for that 9.2 experience as well. And then also worth noting is the other enrichment and engaging courses that we were offering. We, we tried to work really hard to build a balanced schedule that was going to offer an array of opportunities for students, things that um, a lot of different students would find interesting, from classes that dealt specifically with life skills to classes that were in the trades, uh, more trades-oriented fields, to really try to give them an opportunity to experience things that would truly maybe present them opportunities to reconsider um, different avenues for career and college um, programs in the future. 
Okay, so what's in it for them? Selling it and marketing was one of our greatest uh, one of our greatest achievements and challenges. So we tried to think of inexpensive ways to maintain our fund balance, which we were able to do in-house with the help of uh, Mr. Jaster. So we had weekly prizes for those students who need short-term growth goals because 16 days, even though that's four weeks, seems like a long time for an eighth grader in the summer. So every week we had weekly drawings. If you came all four days, you could be eligible because some families did have other summer plans. And if you made the 14, 15, or 16 days, 14 days was an 87.5% attendance rate. We thought that was adequate. We had some really, really big prizes. Yeah, so, so some of those prizes included open lunch. For some of these kids, you know, it's like freedom. You know, they get to come to the high school, and now they get to go, and they get to walk and hang out with friends at lunch. Um, that's a huge step. So we use that as that, that one of those carrots, you know, to draw them in. Another big piece, the free pay-to-play pass. You know, for students um, coming from certain families, that's a huge amount of money that we were able to kind of say, hey, you know what, let us take that off. You know, take that off your plate and let us help you out with that. So we use that as another great incentive along. And, and that was made possible with the help of, again, Mr. Jaster, Mr. Albright, and our administrative team at the high school really kind of worked with us to kind of put these things together to make these possible for students. Free yearbook as well um, is something that we worked with the administrative team to put together and offering those students that wanted it that opportunity to have that. Uh, and also a free athletic uh, sports pass so students are able to come and be a part. What better way, you know, to come and be a part of Midland High and MHS and be a part of Chemic Pride than to have an opportunity to come to the sporting events and to get that free sports pass. And we also threw in there, you, you know, you get to meet Co Coach Kraus in person. So uh, they're bit bigger than life persona. So, and uh, it, that was fantastic. It worked. It, worked. it was, it was, it was You're great. Excited. So um, with that being said, we want to go ahead and we want to show you then and give you an idea of kind of what the journey looked like for the Chemic Challenge to take you through some of the experiences and some of the great things that students got a chance to enjoy while they were participating in this 16-day um, opportunity.
We're so happy. <laughs> we are happy for sure. So uh, we did a Google survey for all the parents and for all the students in this. So thank you to Google surveys. And that's how we came up with the ideas for the challenge. What did you want? As adults, we liked from 8 till noon. And the students said, we don't want to wake up that early. How about 10 to 2 or 12 to 4? So we were able to incorporate the federal lunch program by providing a lunch site as well from 10 to 2. So we took their advice. But if you can see the parent feedback, this is just some of what we thought. And we thought it was amazing that, that 14 year olds would want to come back uh, on a day-to-day -day basis so here's some of their feedback and uh, we just wanted to share a little of that if you'd like the full feedback we can provide that for you as well the, the next piece here also brought a very large smile to our faces um, you can see where we started off here what we ultimately did is we put together a combination assessment that was comprised of first semester and second semester kind of key math concepts and content from their eighth grade year um, we worked with some of the math teachers at Northeast to put this uh, basically test together. Um, upon taking the pretest, students showed a 3.8% mastery of the content on that pretest. And then here's where the smile sets in, and that is at the end of the 16 day program, we ended up with a, a roughly 41 students that took the um, post test and they showed a 63.4% mastery by the end of the program. So we really did have some fantastic gains and really showing that those students over the course of that 16 days, it really made a difference for them in terms of making sense of that content. So that was absolutely huge. And again, a tremendous success and a huge um, you know, uh, recognition to our staff that really worked hard with all the students to, to get them to that point. So fantastic. So we had between 45 and 55 students any given day at the challenge, but we had 41 who completed the 14, 15, or 16 day minimum requirement. And as you can see, so 41, around 40, and this is what they chose, 40 comics. Originally, I know that Jeff and Penny and Brian and I were thinking we might get like 20 or 30. We were shooting for 80. We can mark it even bigger next year. But having said that, we're very pleased with this result for these eighth graders whose, whose lives have changed now as comics. And once again, we couldn't do it without our dedicated staff who did sign up. Jeff had to turn people away because so many Chemex staff signed up, including Northeast staff. So we have a, a serious celebration and a shout out to our Northeast math colleagues who worked closely with us as well. Thank you so much. And if there's any questions now, we'll take any questions that the board has. Yes. Wow, this is it wonderful program and exciting to see the data especially on on the outcomes i do have a question on spillover do you have you noticed anything now that the new school year has started as far as spillover that might have impacted students that weren't even a part of this program certainly i would say one of the huge things that i've noticed um, is that a lot of the students you can just tell talking to them in the building and getting their feedback they're like, Mr. Gates, I'm so glad, you know, I got to, I got a chance to know the building and I feel so much better coming into the school year. And and uh, just in the conversations I've had with them, and I, I can't wait and I look forward to seeing, really looking at this data long term and seeing, you know, where we're at come first marking period, come semester, seeing how that confidence that we built during the Chemic Challenge and some of those skills, seeing how they did carry over beyond just kind of their personal feedback. I think that personal piece is huge, but I'm also really excited to see ultimately how it carries over into the academics as well. I just have a, a few comments. Um, the teamwork was really evident when, that those kids were working in groups, and that's so hard, I think, for freshmen especially to um, display that. So they're coming in with confidence right off the get-go that they can do this teamwork. And I like the practical math application, building the pergola. Um, and I look for your numbers to increase next summer because you know, kids are going to hear about what, what a good time it was and how much better those kids are feeling coming into the school year. So great, great idea. And I was, I'm impressed with just the, the diversity, the variety of staff that you've got involved. You know, when you think you were focusing on math and looking at all that and how the applications, it's got to be exciting for the kids to see something beyond what they think math is. Yeah, I was just going to add that it was, um, I think we literally had volunteers for the summer program from every department, in many cases, several teachers from departments. And so um, for them to to join the group or to make the cut, whatever you want to say, they had to <laughs> put some kind of a spin on it that was math or STEM related. And so it was neat to see the teachers outside of those content areas who were trying to make the connections to math or a STEM related field from their content area. 
Well, I can see why they had so much fun in the pictures and, and just that application. It'll be fun to see, for you too, to see how enthusiastic they are about math as they go forward. Just the attitude as well as the academics. And yeah. that's so true because their efficacy rate totally just skyrocketed. They're so excited about math. They see Mr. Krause. And a lot of these are their freshman teachers. So a lot of these teachers were very intentional in that they're the freshmen. So they have that classroom connection already like hey great to see you again they know their names they they have a home they're in our chemic family already so that sense of inclusion for kids who are sometimes on the fringe or who are not as successful in school they have a home and a place with us and many of these are their freshman teachers so that's great for a teacher and for a student did you do anything over the summer like when you showed the statistics of how much growth there was did you learn anything from that that you can actually apply during the regular school year to try to get that type of growth. You know, I'm sitting here thinking like, what, what caused that? And you know, just for me personally, is it, because it was a fun thing versus when we're in school, everything's like, take the test, do this, take the next test, you know. Right. Did well, that somehow show that? One thing that our staff really took away from this was that pre-test, post-test idea of that formative assessment, which is also part of a great pedagogy, best practices, but the pre-testing to see where the post-test could come and how easy that was on Illuminate, this is where you start and here's the end skill set. So an immediate application was, I'm going to do more pre-test, post-testing, which is best practices. Mm -hmm. and I, I also think the other big thing that the program spoke to um, was you know, how powerful engagement can be. And that if you, you know, you, like this was a situation where these teachers had lots of time in advance. They really put together some truly masterful lessons that could really draw these students in and engage them, get them up, get them moving. And I think uh, when you look at, uh, you know, s students, certainly that's something that all students, regardless of where they stand academically, if we can get them up and get them engaged and get them moving, um, I think that you're going to reap the benefits of that. You're going to reap the rewards. And that's truly, I think, evident in what we saw in the Chemic Challenge. And just going through the pictures, you kind of saw those kids, they were constantly, they were in groups, they were having fun, they were outside side they were moving they were doing stuff and so really building that into the you know to the academic school year I think is really important if we want to continue to see those gains so yeah we got pictures during the summer that Mike was sending us and it looked it was that they were sending me so oh okay yeah. well and then you were forwarding and it looked so much fun but thank you for all the hard work that went into creating can you that. give a two minute talk about Illuminate is for all the board members okay. CIA members have heard this but some of the rest of you okay so Illuminate is an online data warehouse that has the plethora of opportunities that are unbeknownst to me yet but we use it at Midland <laughs> High as an online math tool for pre and post test and did you like that circle graph if you're a visual learner that was an immediate fix for me of okay the red is not good and we want to be in the green means go so what we do is we do like practice tests so you just go into illuminate and then you can create a new assessment you need a 10 question answer key so you put in your answer key it's that easy and then you can upload a word document or a PDF and it's an automatic free bubble sheet so if you know bubble scantrons and it aggregates your data for you in nice little charts and graphs, it can tell you what the top five questions they got wrong, who got those wrong, and how many, just like that. It's really a fantastic tool that can make looking at data a little more teacher friendly if we haven't all had data 501 in college. So this was a great thing. And I just wanted to share with you that our students celebrated. We did a longer slideshow for them at the end of the challenge when we awarded the prizes. When they saw the circle graph, and they saw, they, they got it, and they cheered, and Mr. Bruton was there. They cheered, and when you have eighth grade at-risk kids, I get goosebumps, cheering because they succeeded in math. I mean, I thought we were on TV. Like, this is a movie. This is it. Well, I also want to thank you for your vision of exposing Mr. Pollock and Mr. Dodick in the welding and the shop and the building trades, because I can speak firsthand is they didn't have to try to think anything up to apply math to their topics. No, did you see one of the parent comments said, my daughter will now consider CTE options that would have never been an option? Yeah. So that was their favorite. Did you see the parent survey? They liked cooking, welding, and, and the shop class. But what the students thought would benefit them most at Midland High was the math. So I thought, we have student interest, right? Hands-on mm -hmm. learning, I want to be up and moving. But they also know that, that being math ready is an important life skill. And they saw that mm -hmm. as, as tender age of 14. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was pretty powerful. And they loved it. Everyone loves shop. <laughs> good. Very good. Thank you so Thank much you. for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Which is the 2017 Distinguished Service Awards. I believe Cindy's going to put those up, correct, Cindy, or not? So uh, on the
on the screen will be our 2007 Distinguished Service Awards. And as you know, we recognized, uh, most of you were there, we recognized you, them on opening day. What a great event always uh, for them to have their families show up on top of it. So mm -hmm. We have a new clicker here that I'm not sure anyone showed me how to do this. There we go, I figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> So it is modeled after our Gerstecker Awards um, and doing our support personnel, which is so often get forgotten out there that really is the backbone of the district and makes it occur as we go forward. Um, there's a committee that um, cho chooses them and um, quite a few applicants for them each year. Our board rep is Mary, so Mary got the experience that this year. And Cindy, uh, I think, is on that committee always as well. And so here's our service award winners, Janine Steinburn, uh, very professional at Chestnut Hill. Julie Buda, Bus Driver Transportation Department. Jolene Blatt, Office Professional here in the, in the Curriculum Department. And Chris McCall, Mechanic and Transportation Department. And um, I think a pretty neat story about Julie on that. Go ahead, Cindy. Oh, that was. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I shared that. I don't remember. Forwarded to you. But uh, Julie was quite touched because I think she was struggling at that moment. And along with the award, is a little bit about of a financial Sorry, check. Yeah. Correct if I said that it wrong. And so it really came at an opportune time for not just recognition, but that little bit of uh, little bit of funds that assisted as well. And we, course, Lynn and I were sitting at the breakfast that morning and happened to sit right with her. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was wonderful because she was feeling a little awkward because she didn't know a lot of people right there. And we sat and talked and then when we went in and saw that she uh, received the award, it was really something special. Yeah, she said, I'm not sure why I'm here. I don't really know anybody here. And I looked at Pam and I said, but I know I do. <laughs> so congratulations to the four of them. Yeah, absolutely. All right, moving into item 3.5 for action, which is our tax resolution for the winter of 2017. So, Bob. OK, kind of. Uh, feels a little redundant and there's a lot of paperwork there. You already know these numbers, but it's the official part of what we did because we appro uh, approved all these back when you did the budget. But in essence, the resolution, which you don't have to read in its entirety, but we do take a roll call vote at the end on our use our tax resolutions, um, is for 18 mills in non-homestead. It works out to be 7.7100 mills on commercial personal property. And that's because our hold harmless is 1.7100. And our bond, of course, uh, from our financial advisor uh, was calculated at 2.72. As you know, the bond changes from year to year depending on where our taxable value is, what we paid off, what we spent out. Uh, and that gets done for us. The um, hold harmless millage is done with calculation, which is included in your packet. It's like a three-tab spreadsheet right from the Treasury Department. Uh, it allows us to, and it's what changes the most. You can raise $415 a student. So when you're determining what it is right now, you're guessing at how many students. Uh, you're somewhat guessing on the taxable value because you have it from last May or even as late as September, but you don't have it as the year will go on because it will change during the course of the year. And the other thing that plays a part in this now that's changed a lot is the um, personal property tax. It goes into the calculation. But you have to remember when it goes in, the state also takes some things out of that. So the number you put in is not the exact one that they're going to refund you the personal property tax and give that back to you. So to make a long story short and complicated, uh, we work it out. Each year you can come back and you hold harmless. If you collect too much, you have to uh, lower your millage rate. If you did not collect enough, you, you raise it slightly. And again, it's just to raise that total of which would be $415. And, 31 cents for each student that you have. And that's the way that that works. So what you had in front of you then in your packet was the actual resolution. You had what's <coughs> called the L4029, which Cindy tomorrow morning will send out to all the entities around the townships and every place else you can think of uh, and into the state. It's the formal declaration of what the millage rates are. And ours is a little more complicated too because we have city which collects twice and the county which only and the townships which are once. So we have twice the amount of things on there. And the um, other part is that hold harmless calculation that we include in your packet just to see it goes back to the state. So what we need, uh, if you're good with the millage rates, is to pass that uh, resolution and take a uh, roll call vote on that. I'm happy to do that. 
I move to approve the certification resolution for the 2017-18 fiscal year taxes. A complete copy of the resolution shall be attached to the original of these minutes. Support. Support. Support by Scott. Is there any discussion? All right. Seeing none, would you please do a roll call vote? Yes. President Branstad. Yes. Vice President Singer. Yes. Member Baker. Yes. Member Blazy. Yes. Member Friedel. Yes. I also vote yes, and Treasurer Frizee is absent. Thank you very much, and thanks to the public for all their and a thank you to the city and the county for all the work they did to get those, help us with the numbers. All right, moving into item four, request to address the board. Would anyone like to address the board tonight? Did they have anyone? All right. Seeing none, we will move into item five, which is FFO. And we did have an FFO meeting last Monday. So with Patrick on, I'll have PM for the minutes, please. Okay. Uh, we met on September 11th of 2017. We had a discussion of the 2016-17 audit that you heard tonight. Mr. Youngstrom and Ms. Rolfe reviewed the 2016-17 audit with the FFO committee. Topics included various sections of the audit report, fund balance of the general fund, net assets, financial statements, the single audit, governance communication, and new and upcoming accounting pronouncements. The public presentation of the audit will take place at our board meeting tonight. Purchase, uh, we also discussed purchasing policy limits. The committee continued to discuss uh, the current district policy for purchasing. Most districts use a state statute and limit as a basis for competitive bids and board approval. Data was shared regarding purchase, uh, purchases during the 2016-17 school year and how a change would affect what the board is asked to approve based on the state statute. Neola will be consulted rega regarding a policy change. Additional Chromebook purchases, the purchase of 120 additional Chromebooks that we heard about tonight uh, because of increased enrollment was discussed. The purchase was uh, totaled $33,720 and will be at the September board meeting. District vacant land, uh, the status of selected school-owned properties were shared with the committee. The committee directed administration to look into selling two of the properties through a bid process. L4029 tax request, the 2017 L4029 tax request is an annual state and county requirement. The tax resolution was previewed and will be presented to the full board at tonight's meeting. Bond work review, Mr. Cooper, Mr. Sherrill, and the committee reviewed the current status of the summer bond project work, and the next FFO meeting will be October 9th. All right, thank you. Okay, hey, first I have three items just for informational purposes on gifts totaling $700. You'll see those three go towards uh, Northeast Middle School Robotics, uh, anonymous donation for at-risk students uh, for their lunches, uh, wanting or offering to pay for some of their lunch bills that are there, and a $500 gift to the Dow uh, Boys Varsity Tennis Team. There is one item for, because of the amount of money involved that you need to take action on and accept, it's for $15,200 to be used to purchase for Midland High a batting golf cage combination. And that one is from Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Jeff, uh, Jeffrey Gandy. You might recall earlier they were also pretty generous with the um, band that they provided for transportation of some of our smaller sports teams. So that would require your action. All right. So at this time, I will take this motion. I have a motion to approve the gift from the Gandys of $15,200 for the Midland High Batting and Golf Cage. Support. All right, and by Pam, support by Lynn. Any discussion other than the huge thank you? Yeah, All right. Big, very big thank you. Very generous uh, couple. All right, see no additional discussion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, thank you, Gandy family. Moving into item six, human resources. Um, we were going to have Janet do this. She never gets to speak, so I've decided <laughs> I don't like to speak, so Janet's going to do this. Okay. okay. Great. We'll the board and staff. Out.
The board and staff extend their deepest sympathies to the family of Mrs. Anna Unkovich, who passed away on August 7th. Mrs. Unkovich was a teacher and coach at Northeast Middle School for 27 years, retiring in 2001. During her tenure at MPS, she was recipient of the Gerstacker Award for Excellence in Teaching and the Lloyd Osborne Award for Coaching. Yeah. Quite impressive. Okay. Offer her family our sympathy. And the following staff members announced the retirement effective as of these dates. Mary Lefevre, office professional at H.H. Dow High School, December 1st, 2017. And Frances Martinez, counselor at Northeast Middle School on October 31st, 2017. Thank you. Moving into item seven, which is correspondence to and from the Board of Education. You can read that in the agenda. Item eight, schedule activities for information. So note that our next regularly scheduled board meeting will be October 16th. And at this time, we will move into study discussion session. And I will start with you. OK, hey, very good. Uh, thank you for the audit tonight. I thought it was a great presentation and a very thorough audit, and I'm very pleased with the results. One thing I would mention on that is when we talked about the per pupil uh, analysis in the general fund and expenditures being down, uh, the main reason for that was enrollment and um, our long term payout for salaries. And I just wanted to remind the public that. We're at a low point right now with those expenditures, and it's just going to grow over time. So um, we, we are working on improving our fund balance, but that's very important um, for those reasons. And um, just appreciate all the support of the administration being very uh, knowledgeable and having a, a good strategy for um, putting in, us in a healthy position with our fund balance. All right. That's all that's I have. It. I just wanted to make a comment on Anna Unkovich. Uh, several of us may have known Anna, and my children had Anna, and she uh, was an exceptional, <coughs> exceptional woman inside and out, not at, only as a teacher, but she touched many, many kids' lives uh, inside and outside of the classroom, and she put, a ve put up a very valiant fight uh, right to the end. So I just wanted to comment that um, we have a lot of wonderful, wonderful teachers, but tell you, Anna was top notch and she will be definitely missed. Um, looks like school's off to a good start. I had a chance to visit a couple of the schools, checking out those new entrances and trying to figure out how to get in and out of some of them. <laughs> so um, just I just applaud everyone that worked so hard to get everything done and ready for school to start. And um, then today I had a, a fun opportunity. I. Um, ushered at the Center for the Arts, and Dow had put on a program inviting about 1,500 uh, high school students from the Great Lakes Bay Area to hear a couple speakers. And uh, they were phenomenal, but talking about giving back to your community. And um, we know how much our students give and our students do. And this just was a, a feather in the cap to um, remind them to take it, keep doing that for life. You know, reach beyond, and uh, so Middleton and Dow High were both represented, as well as many other. And it sounds like we'll have partnering opportunities with the PYP program. I think they talked about that a little bit. So maybe we'll see more in the future as far as opportunities our teachers might have. Yep. So, and um, I'm thinking next summer I want to go over and middle and high and check out that uh, chemic challenge. That sounds like a lot of fun math. I was listening to my nephew last night trying to figure out a calculus problem and his dad and, and my husband were both trying to figure him out. I, I had no idea what they were talking about and as I'm listening to them I thought I need a chemic chem challenge <laughs> problem to even understand what they were talking about. So uh, just thank you so much for that program. I just it's amazing what um, excitement um, for learning can be instilled in, in children when they when they learn to love learning. So, on that note, I'll pass it on. It was a an enjoyable um, financial presentation tonight, um, but we won't rest on that. It, you know, the clean audit was great. The unmodified opinion was fantastic, and, and you know, it's easy to fixate on what we have in the fund balance and, and how much it's grown over the last couple of years. But 
it's important that the public knows and that everybody realizes that the risks are out there that this could turn on a dime and we could be back to where we were two years ago. Um, I, I think our leadership now, Mike and, and the team, are, are doing fabulous with, with managing things and running a tight ship. Um, but it's good that everybody um, sees that and that, that was part of the presentation of the risks that are out there and, and how quickly um, things can go from good to bad. Uh, and then true to form with the presentation tonight um, with the Chemic Challenge, just when you think you see a great presentation that it, they just keep getting better <laughs> and better and better and every presentation is great and, and not only these programs phenomenal but the results go with it. Uh, what an incredible turnaround for these kids and to see that and then to, to think about the ability to apply what they learn in 16 days mm -hmm. into our regular curriculum over the course of the year and see what that could do for these kids um, I think is remarkable and very very exciting. Um, so thank you. Uh, they are truly shining stars and everybody involved in that program uh, deserves the same award. Um, so I'll leave it at that. Thank you. We're going to need more candy bars. Yeah. <laughs> Brett. I just want to thank Mr. Dave Youngstrom for his presentation, Mr. Cooper and Ms. Holderby and the uh, team of everyone that was involved. And getting that in front of us uh, and approved in September, that is awesome. That gives everyone uh, a clear picture of where we are and where we're headed. Um, also want to thank the Shining Stars, Connie and Anthony. Uh, their chemic, all of the Chemic Challenge volunteers and the graduates. But the one thing that I saw out of that that I was, I thought was really, really exciting is that a lot of those kids chose to cover their expenses with the pay to play. And for them to earn that and to give up their summer and combining that and, and it's great to have the child earning that right to be on that field by covering his own pay to play. And they did it by going to school. And it's just a win-win situation. I, I think that that part of it as well is gonna help the growth in that program and growth of other programs like it. Thank you. Mary. That sounds, sounds like a broken record, but I, I wanted to say again, um, hats off to Connie and Anthony on that uh, coming up with the idea and all those that worked on it, just a, a phenomenal job. And um, I guess the tossing it out to other schools to try to develop um, a similar program to help students transitioning from one place to another or help, those, um, help reduce that achievement gap. And um, um, my other comment was that drivers, as they're going to and from work or uh, in the morning and in the afternoon, just allowing a little extra travel time to make sure our students are safe, obeying those traffic signals, those new signals that are in place, and watching out for that little kid that darts in the street. I know I was sitting at a corner just today, and there was a kid that started across, and the crossing guard kind of cornered him, and nope, nope, you gotta go down here <laughs> to cross, but kids are just d act so impulsively, and we have to be on the lookout. We wanna keep our kids safe, so. I mean, I echo what everyone else says and love, love the yeah. chemic challenge. I mean, I think back to before I went back to work, the thing I was most sad to give up when I went back was I was a math mentor at the middle school level, you know, working at Central and at um, Northeast, and I just loved that. And kind of what Brad was talking about, some of the CTE things, I think what they did was they showed the application of math this summer to them, and that once you understand the application, it helps you get excited about learning it. So really, um, that, that was awesome. And I can only imagine how many hours and hours they put into the planning of that to launch that the first year. And so appreciative. Um, audit, that was great. Like everyone else said, we're you know trending positively with our fund balance. But of course, once again, cautiously optimistic because we do know that we are going to have capital needs out there, things that aren't covered by the bond. Um, you know, right off the bat, I think about what we went through um, late August with the electrical system at Dow High um, that caused a lot of issues. I know my daughter more than once, I think, was standing in her bathing suit outside when the power went off <laughs> when she was there for swim practice. Um, you know, still, I mean, sadly, a lot of un uncertainty with um, Dow with, you know, a new announcement this past week. And um, 
Also, just that we know, based on what we've done to get here, we're at the low point. I think you had point, pointed that out with, you know, a lot of our salaries bringing in a lot of new teachers. This is kind of the low, and it will only increase from here. So, um, I think we're in a good point right now, but we also know that moving forward, we have to be careful. So, that is all I have. I will turn it over to you, Mike. Well, also on that audit side, I'd mentioned, um, well, you, you touched a little bit, Angela, so last Monday, I think, at, uh, well, we're feeling good about the audit, we're feeling good about the enrollment, and the next day you get the, or that evening, I think we got, all got the dowel announcement of what potentially could affect some jobs in the community, and then the next day, the chemical bank one on top mm -hmm. of it. So it tells you how volatile still our economy is, our jobs are, which is enrollment for us, which is enrollment she could quickly change just on those jobs um, where we've gained. And so uh, fund balance is a vital thing. Uh, you know, I, I kind of say somewhere between 16 and 19 percent would be like where I consider it to be. I think Dave Youngstrom even went higher. Mm -hmm. CPA. I think he said like 2021 is what he would say. And so um, we certainly need it. And then, you know, the capital side, you know, that bond of 121 million easily could have been 220 million. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, when we're done, we're not done. So make sure you understand there's the continuous work to do on older buildings, yes. and, and we're behind. There's, there's no doubt behind it. To get through tough times, we're behind on that. And that includes capital purchases like we began to purchase some equipment for the support people behind the scenes, from lawnmowers to trucks to all those pieces of it. And so, um, we're, we're, you know, I, I think I told Angela a little earlier when she was visiting that I think I feel like I'm in a spend mode. I'm improving more spending than I'm comfortable with. So I think well, certainly no Bob's feeling that way right now. And so we, but there are needs we have to fill now that we have some. So we've got to be responsible in all those areas. When you got it, you should take care of some of those problems. And so we need to be careful there very much so. Um, opening school went very well, particularly when you think about the number of balls we had in the air. And so we pretty much had every building in the district under some construction, some smaller than others and um, two elementaries under full construction and the completion of Central Park. And so I would never tell you that it's complete or finished. As people need to remember that Plymouth and Woodcrest are not. There are maybe, I don't know what the percentage would be, 50, 60% of the full construction is completed in those buildings. So they're not complete sites yet. And so I wanna make sure people understand that there's a lot still on going on there. And then like all construction, there's punch list afterwards. And so it's slowed down now. You see lots of things that, well, I wish we had done that, and I wish we had fixed that. And um, I was looking today, we put a new curb at the front of the sidewalk, but there's, it needs to be sealed, I guess you would call it, behind it, you know, and pieces like that. And so the architects are walking and the construction manager are looking at our, we've asked our building principals and our site guys to be out there looking and finding those issues that probably were overlooked or punch list as we go forward. So well, I I think we have a way for the teachers to also add to they that do. too, right? Very, yes. very nice. The uh, construction manager created a, um, a site where they go on and put their list of things in there as well because um, their classrooms are all standard architectural build, but of course the personalization process is yet to come. And so when the teacher gets in there and says, you know, I said, gee, I sure would like one more little pegboard over here. We probably could do that. Or, hey, that electrical outlet wasn't working. I think that was one of them. We made an electrical outlet somewhere still not functioning. Some of those things. So um, teachers are inputting that. The construction managers working with the contractors to fix all those as we go forward. Um, always things that you add, right? We have the funds to do. Um, I think we painted it up the main corridor in Plymouth because of the brick maybe not coming back around. I think we would like to paint more after we see that. Mm -hmm. So there will be those things ongoing with bond dollars if it's available, but also some capital dollars. That's why we need that fund minutes. You know, the worst thing you do is fix your house up and then go later on and go, gee, I sure wish I would have placed the front door as well. And that's kind of what we want to make sure that our general fund can pick up that the bond didn't do as we go forward on those pieces of you know, I, I, once in a while I think um, some information have gotten out to the public from our staff about furniture. Well, they didn't purchase furniture. And um, the furniture is the last in. You know, you can complete the project, there is furniture to be replaced. Furniture, uh, they, they kind of use a standard line. I know what a typical building that age furniture would be, I, and I don't remember the number, it's 30, 40% furniture replacement. Um, so there, but there has been some furniture replacement that sometimes people don't realize when you build a new media center you have to put furniture in, or a new cafeteria. You have to so there have been purchases, and you guys have proved many of those, not just Central Park, because it was a brand new school, but for Woodcrest and Plymouth and Northeast 
secure entrance and some of those things as we went forward. But there's still more furniture coming at the end, uh, as well as you know when we get there and it's a 30% replacement. We let's say we look and say, hey, geez, we need two more classroom sets of furniture. That's where that capital general fund can come in as well. So we need to have that as we go forward. Uh, as I said, enrollment is looking pretty well. Um, we have. As most things, we clean things up, and there are there are some withdrawals like we expect. But I would expect that we easily will make our budget number and most likely be up from that number. I would sure like to be able to tell you that we maybe even be up to ten pounds, but that would be too early to tell you that. So I'm pretty <laughs> optimistic, but I'm not sure sure we're going to fully hit that. But there's a potential we could be up from last week. The elementary carrying it all, they're definitely up from where they've been. That's been the trend for about a year and a half to two years in the elementary. Um, and they're up again in, in the uh, elementaries from last spring because our high schools are smaller and smaller classes are going through. And how can we be near that once the elementary numbers? People are choosing us um, left and right now at, at the elementary. That's a nice thing to have longevity wise. Um, I sent you some, and you may not recall the state assessment data when it was early, <coughs> very early released or right before it was released for you. Um, and we didn't give you a real good nails. Um, Brian did a nice job. I think he needs to, we'll get, I'll get that, make him give it to me for uh, all of you. But he shared it today at CIA and kind of framed it different than I had heard it myself, even though I looked at it. And so it was quite positive, we maybe more than I, I thought. So a couple things I wrote down from that. Well, one, I sent to you that you know our scores are in the top three to six percent in the state, depending on which school, which score you're looking at, which is impressive. But um, today he shared out the at risk group. And its growth that was really impressive so I'll send that to you we really are beginning to move the at-risk our gap kids uh, forward so that's really promising things like County challenge big plus on that going forward the other piece of data I shared out with you was very nice is our graduation rate 95.6 uh, is where we are today we want 100 so we're not done uh, certainly but if you saw the numbers and where we've been um, from uh, somewhere in the low 90s we move forward each year 95.6 uh, again even though we need all of them, is we put you in the top a uh, few schools in the state graduation rate. So, but we still need to do more consent. So, hence maybe the program like the Paths program mm -hmm. that we're doing in high to do, to get that there as well. So, and come challenge, we'll play into that too, right? That transition yeah. to high school. It's kind of shared if they start on time in credits, they're going to graduate. So, that's all I have for you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And at this time, we will end the board meeting. Thank you all very much for coming tonight.